Today, I'm going to explain a crime film called Gone Baby Gone. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The city of Boston is a special kind of place. Folks live with pride about who they are and where they're from. But one day, the entirety of Boston gets shaken to its very core when a young girl named Amanda McCready is abducted. The only piece of information that the police have to work with is that Amanda was last seen carrying her favorite doll, Mirabelle. Private detective Patrick Kenzie and his girlfriend Angie Gennaro see the news on the television in their little house. The couple watches as Captain Jack Doyle, the head of the missing child division, firmly tells the media that they will not fail in finding Amanda. The following morning, Lionel and Bea McCready knock on Patrick and Angie's front door. Lionel is Amanda's uncle, and they sought Patrick out because they want to hire him to help find Amanda. However, Lionel seems hesitant to have Patrick's help during their exchange, while Bea appears to be extremely distressed by Amanda's disappearance. Both Patrick and Angie come across as reluctant at first, and they note that they haven't handled a case like this before. Bea tells them that the girl's mother, Helene, put her to bed and left around 8 o'clock to visit a friend, but when she returned home, Amanda was gone. Bea makes a subtle remark about Helene's character, but Lionel defends his sister, saying that he's been convicted before and made bad decisions as well. Eventually, Lionel and Bea convince Patrick and Angie to speak with Helene. At the McCready residence, Patrick and Angie discuss whether they should take the case or not. Angie has her reservations, saying she doesn't want to find the kid in a dumpster somewhere. The two of them then enter the house and meet with Helene, who's lounging with her friend while watching TV. Helene behaves rudely toward the two, and it's immediately apparent that their home is a volatile environment. Helene doesn't even seem to care about her missing daughter. Lionel and Helene argue in front of Patrick and Angie, until Bea asks everyone except Helene to go to the hallway with her. There, Bea shows Patrick and Angie a picture of Amanda, then desperately tells them that she just wants to find her. Patrick and Angie accept the case, then proceed to ask them questions. Lionel tells them that Helene always goes to a bar called Fillmore Lounge every day. Lionel also mentions that he's been sober for 23 years while Helene's still drinking daily and doing drugs. Still in the McCready residence, Patrick and Angie meet with Captain Jack Doyle. He talks them down and questions whether they're even suitable for the task. Captain Doyle further emphasizes that it's already been three days, and in cases like this, the chance of finding the child drops dramatically after the first day. Captain Doyle then tells them that he'll have two of his detectives update them about any information. Patrick and Angie head to the Fillmore Lounge to ask around. They first speak with the bartender, who regards them with guarded hostility. The bartender tells them to buy a drink or leave, so they proceed to order two tonics. Patrick then spots an old friend of his in the bar. The two sit at a table while Patrick asks questions about Helene. Patrick's old friend Steve reports that Helene didn't leave Amanda for just 30 minutes. In actuality, she was at the Fillmore Lounge for more than two hours, sniffing lines of coke with her boyfriend, Ray Lakansky. Just then, a burly man snaps at Steve, telling him to shut his mouth. With Patrick and the man getting into a heated argument, the man gets his other guy to lock the front door. Patrick then pulls his gun out, demanding the men to let them leave. The burly man complies, even making an inappropriate remark at Angie. Pissed, Patrick makes sure to hit him on his way out. Patrick and Angie then go to meet Sergeant Detective Remy Bresson and his partner Nick at a restaurant. Once they get acquainted, the cops lay down their current suspects in the case, namely, Corwin Earl, Leon Trett, and Roberta Trett. Corwin is known to be attracted to children, and he lives with the Trett couple, who are drug addicts. However, Nick informs them that there are holes in the theory that Corwin is behind Amanda's disappearance. Patrick then puts forward Ray Lakansky on the table, suggesting that they could start looking there. Remy and Nick tell them they have no idea who Ray Lakansky is. Still, the four of them move to speak with Helene once more to ask her what she knows. Before heading to Helene's place, Patrick and Angie drop by at their friend Bubba's place. Since Bubba is a drug lord, Patrick asks if he sold anything to the three suspects, Ray, or Helene. Bubba denies having anything to do with these people, and Patrick mentions that he never deals with anyone risky. Bubba, however, comments that Ray has worked for his business rival and Haitian drug lord, Chi Jean Baptiste. Equipped with a new lead, Patrick and Angie finally leave for Helene's place. At the McCready residence, Remy and Nick interrogate Helene about her connections with Cheese. After much back and forth between them, Helene finally reveals that she and Ray were drug mules for Cheese and that they've stolen $130,000 from him. Helene also confesses that the money is with Ray, who's currently in Chelsea. Without wasting a second, the private detectives ride with Helene in Patrick's car while the cops board a separate one to make their way to Chelsea. In Patrick and Angie's car, 
Patrick starts to get friendly with Helene to gain her trust. With this, Helene begins divulging more details about the night Amanda went missing. Angie gets aggravated by Helene's selfish behavior considering she didn't ask for help, nor did she even contact Cheese to get her daughter back just to save herself. Patrick then asks Helene how she knows that Ray hasn't spent all the money yet. To this, she admits that she actually hid the money, and Ray doesn't have it. When they arrive at Ray's location, they find him already dead. He is tied to a chair while covered in blood with a gunshot wound in his chest. Ray was tortured and killed by Cheese's man, who clearly didn't believe that he had no clue where the money was. Shocked to find Ray's dead body, Helene steps out of the room. Patrick follows her as she slips to the backyard, and he tries to convince her to tell him where the money is. Finally, she reveals that it's right there in the yard. They dig up the money then decide on what they should do next. Angie asks Remy if they should bring in the FBI, to which Remy refuses. Remy and Nick tell them that it's not considered kidnapping until they receive a note. Remy then puts forward a plan to swap the money for Amanda from Cheese. Patrick and Angie take Helene back home, and on the way to the door, Helene breaks down and cries. Patrick holds her, and she solemnly swears that she just wants Amanda home, even promising to change and quit using drugs. During the night, Patrick and Angie meet with Remy and Nick outside Cheese's hideout. The two parties argue over which of them will go in and talk to Cheese. Patrick reasons that Cheese will be scared off if he's approached by a cop so it would be better if he and Angie spoke with them instead. In the end, the officers agree to let them do it. In the hideout, Patrick and Angie are met by Cheese and his right-hand man, Chris. Patrick is already acquainted with them both, so Cheese permits them an audience. Patrick proceeds to tell them about Ray, the money, and Amanda. While Cheese feigns any knowledge at first, Patrick ends up threatening him. This leads Cheese to point a gun at them while suspecting that they may be wearing a wire. After inspecting under their shirt for any recording devices, Cheese admits that he did Ray in but had no involvement whatsoever with Amanda. Without gathering any lead, Patrick and Angie leave the room to meet back with Remy and Nick. They're all equally disappointed about the futile encounter with Cheese. In the middle of the night, Remy calls Patrick and Angie, saying that they received a call from Cheese. He reports that Cheese wants to take the deal with Amanda, and he wants to do it that night. Remy then adds that there's a bit of an issue. Since the station was recording calls now, Captain Jack Doyle got a hold of their conversation, which is a problem since Remy and Nick operated without Doyle's knowledge or authority. Moreover, she sent them proof in the mailbox to show that he really does have Amanda. Angie checks the mail, where she finds a pink blanket and a note from the drug lord. At the station, Captain Doyle is furious to discover that Remy made an unauthorized ransom arrangement with Cheese. Despite this, they continue with the plan as not to endanger Amanda any further. Captain Doyle hands Patrick the transcript of the call between Cheese and Remy, indicating that Cheese wants to meet up at a lake to make the exchange. Remy then gets Patrick and Angie up to speed about Cheese's demands. Cheese wants to separate them with Patrick and Angie taking Amanda while the cops on the other end across the lake to give the money. Angie then asks Captain Doyle if they should go public with all this, and Captain Doyle responds by sorrowfully telling her about his 12-year-old daughter who got abducted and killed. In the dead of night, Patrick and Angie take their positions for the exchange. They walk up into the quarry with the cops on the other side of the lake. Patrick, on the other hand, feels uneasy about the whole thing. Suddenly Patrick and Angie hear shots firing in the distance before Remy calls out to them on the radio. The two of them rush toward the other end of the lake just in time to hear something plunging in the water. Patrick looks over and sees Cheese dead on the ground. Angie looks over the edge, and without any hesitation, she jumps over straight down to the water. Angie manages to retrieve Amanda's blanket and her doll, but there was no sign of Amanda herself. At Angie's hospital room, Patrick comes in and speaks with Angie about the search for Amanda. Though there were several divers on the job already, the lake size makes it difficult to find and confirm where Amanda could be or if she even survived. After a few days, they call off the search, and Amanda is declared dead. Captain Jack Doyle retired from the police force. Cheese's right-hand man Chris is later killed off by an unknown party. As for Patrick and Angie, they're both deeply affected by everything that happened. Months later, another child named Johnny Pietro is reported missing. He was last seen wearing St. Christopher's medallion. The prospect of another missing child only plunges Patrick deeper into his distress. One day at a bar, Bubba comes by to take Patrick out for a ride. When they arrive at the destination, Bubba tells him that the house is the residence of the three suspects he showed him earlier, namely Corwin Earl, Leon Trett, and Roberta Trett. The two of them enter the house, and Leon lets them in since Bubba offered to sell him drugs. Roberta comes inside the room and takes a whiff of the drugs that Bubba sampled. 
Bubba then proceeds to walk around the house, checking each room. Roberta Trett becomes upset about this and pulls a gun out on Bubba before he's able to walk up the stairs. Just then, Corwin Earl steps out of the room on the second floor. Patrick notices that Corwin is wearing St. Christopher's medallion, which Johnny Pietro was last seen wearing. Bubba gives Roberta the drugs before he and Patrick make their leave. Later on, Patrick tips off Remy about Corwin's address. Remy, Nick, and Patrick all return to the house fully armed. Donning their bulletproof vests, Remy and Nick tell Patrick to stay outside. Remy goes out back, and Nick walks up to the front door. Before he could enter, he is suddenly shot in the neck, causing him to fall. Patrick quickly reacts and tries to stop the bleeding, but shots keep firing in their direction. Patrick then decides to pull out his gun and enter the house. There, he finds a dead Leon on the ground, and as he goes to inspect his body, Roberta suddenly comes in firing at him. They trade shots, and Patrick maneuvers his way to the second floor, where he locks the door to keep Roberta out. There, Patrick finds Corwin on the floor, devastated and telling him, it was an accident. Patrick walks further into the room and finds Johnny Pietro's body in the bathtub. Enraged, Patrick shoots Corwin in the head. Patrick then sees Remy opening the door and stepping over Roberta's dead body. Later at the hospital, Nick is in critical condition, while Patrick is distressed and guilty about killing Corwin. Angie tries to comfort him and tells him that she's proud of him for what he did. Remy weighs in, saying he did the right thing by shooting down Corwin. A drunken Remy tells Patrick a little story and recounts that he used to plant evidence back in the day and had an FBI informant by the name of Ray Lukansky. That night, when Patrick comes home, he tells Angie that Remy lied about not knowing Ray. This causes Patrick to grow suspicious of him. Later, they find out that Nick died in the hospital. At Nick's funeral, Patrick confronts Remy, asking why he lied about Ray. Remy says that he should forget about what he said before giving him a subtle threat. Patrick then leaves it for the moment and approaches Devin, a police officer with whom Patrick is close. Patrick invites him for lunch and asks him questions about Remy. Devin reveals that Remy somehow discovered that Cheese was robbed a week before Cheese himself even knew he was burglarized. When Patrick asks how, Devin only warns him against investigating cops. With that, Patrick takes his leave. Later, Patrick tells Angie that he has a theory about how things really went down. He then intimidates Lionel into meeting him in a bar. There, he deduces that Lionel and Remy had conspired to stage a fake kidnapping to take the drug money for themselves, all while teaching Helene a nice lesson. Finally, Lionel admits to this and claims that Amanda's death in the lake was accidental. It was never meant to happen. Just then, Remy steps into the bar, wearing a mask and claiming it's a robbery. He plays the role of a robber, but he only points his gun at Lionel with every intention of killing him. Lionel then says that he told them that Amanda fell in the lake. Remy seems to relent for a moment, but before he could retreat, he gets shot by the bartender twice. Remy flees, making Patrick give chase. Patrick eventually catches up to him up on an empty building's roof, but by the time he got there, Remy's already bleeding to death. Later, the police question Patrick about Remy's death, and he learns that the police never had a phone transcript like the one that Doyle had him read. Realizing that Doyle might be involved in this, Patrick leaves to see him in his retirement home. Patrick and Angie arrive at Doyle's retirement home, but Angie stays behind, not wanting to confront him. Patrick sees Doyle packing his things and getting ready to leave. Before Patrick could accuse Doyle about Amanda, the girl herself appears from within the house and runs to Doyle. Though Patrick is taken aback, he threatens Doyle that he'll report him to the police. Doyle tries to convince Patrick that letting Amanda stay with him is the right thing to do, especially since Amanda's mother treats her poorly. Patrick then argues that Helene is Amanda's mother and that she belongs with her. This leaves Patrick with a moral dilemma, should he return the girl to her neglectful mother or allow her to live with someone who will treat her right? Unable to decide, Patrick goes back to his car and seeks Angie's counsel. Angie thinks that the right thing to do is to let Doyle keep Amanda, even promising that if Patrick returns the child to Helene, she'll hate him and leave. In spite of everything, Patrick decides to report Doyle to the police, and in a matter of minutes, the cops come to his house to arrest him. Later, Patrick now lives alone and heartbroken over Angie leaving him, just like she promised. Helene has Amanda once again, but now, Lionel is in jail and Bea has banned Helene from her home. One afternoon, Patrick visits Helene and Amanda, and he sees that Helene hasn't changed. She's even reveling in her fame as the media's victimized mother. But at the very least, Patrick observes that Helene's apartment is cleaner. Helene leaves their home to go on a date, and when Patrick discovered that she hadn't made plans for a babysitter yet, he decides to volunteer. Now alone in the living room together, Patrick asks Amanda about her doll Mirabelle. 
Much to his surprise, Amanda corrects Patrick and says her doll's name is Annabelle, implying that Helene doesn't even know the name of her daughter's favorite toy. A sinking feeling plagues Patrick's gut, and he's left to feel that he may not have made the right choice. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.